All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome into low. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And of course, we have a we just have a bunch of stuff to talk about. We're going to kind of be all over the map. There's some advocacy. There's some safety. Of course, we're going to do first impressions. Of course, we're going to do beer. Like I said, safety, battery, safety. Had a little incident this last uh, hmm, yesterday, and uh, the fear is still fresh in my mind, and it's something that I want to talk about because these things can happen to you. Uh, alarmist things. It can happen to you. It can happen to me. It can happen to anybody, and it did happen to me. Um, so first things first, let me get out my vlog notes. Uh, I do want to make a correction from from last week. Uh, the beer I tasted, yes, the beer I tasted, turns out he did email me. His name is Thomas. Uh, I have Thomas slash Tiffany, so I think Tiffany is his better half, his significant other, if you will. Uh, Thomas, yes, from Belgium, sent me those beers, so shout out to you, Thomas. I do have three more of your beers uh, just waiting. They're in my beer you know, cabinet, uh, waiting to go in the fridge, waiting to get nice and cold. Uh, we might be able to taste one of those uh, again next week. So yes, absolutely. Thank you, Thomas and Tiffany. Additionally, it just says Phantom Tank update. Let me get to my emails because, pardon me, I believe I have an email from Horizon Tech regarding the Phantom Tank. I think they saw my, uh, I think they saw, I think they saw my, uh, my vlog last week and yeah here we go phantom issue the uh he writes to me his name is sam <laughs> everybody in china's named sam or uh dave or uh you know george i don't know whatever it is what it is hey nick thank you so much for the phantom review we truly appreciate your valuable feedback and your professional opin opinions we learned a lot from your review it wasn't i mean it wasn't a full review uh but thank you Regardless, uh, regarding to the refill problem that you mentioned, it is true. The refill hole is too small and it's hard to fill from it. Thank you. Acknowledgement. That's what I like. But luckily we have refined the refill hole and the problem is solved now. So if it's okay, we'd like to send you, resend you the Phantom with the updated refill hole for you to review. I noticed that you also have some questions and concerns about the Phantom mechanical cooling system and recycling system. Please check the attached files and I hope you can figure it out. <laughs> if there's any further questions, please feel free to let me know. And I didn't actually, oh, here's the, uh, so I have a, uh, I did some video on my iPhone of this whole recycling system and here's what it says. There is a baffle over the coil head. Any excess liquid that is not vaporized at the coil gets collected here. This also helps ensure that the user does not get any spit back through the drip tip into their mouth. And that is true. I've never got spit back on this tank. Where is it? When, uh, when enough liquid is gathered here, gravity will cause it to drop through the recycling holes into the coil. There is a recycling chamber on the baffle. Vapors travels through the vents on the sides of the baffle, then proceeds through the liquid recycling chamber. As vapor travels through the chamber, the surface area goes from very small to large. This causes any excess condensation to collect in the chamber and be filtered down the sidewalls. When enough liquid collects in the chamber, gravity in the chamber, comma, gravity causes it to be fed back down into the coil, thus being recycled. There are four liquid recycling holes on the sides of the coil heads, which along the outside of the liquid recycling system, these holes act as a conduit for any unvaporized liquid to be fed back to the coil. I, looking at it, uh, and I hopefully I showed you the video already, looking at it, it just looks like a mishmash of sort of baffles, but I guess there is a method to the madness. There is a mechanical cooling system present in the center of the tank. The system uses surface area and distance to cool the vapor down before it reaches your mouth. This allows you, the user to get a vape at higher wattages, enjoy a cooler vape with outstanding flavor. Due to the nature of this cooling system, the tank itself may become hot. This is normal and will not cause any issues. So the cooling system cools down the vapor, not the tank. The tank is still gonna get wicked hot like it used to and like it still does. The cooling system is meant to cool down the vapor, which, I mean, this is all anecdotal evidence here, but I have this currently at 93 watts, 0.21 ohm coil 
four point two volts. It's actually very, very cool. If I rock something else, especially a tank at that high of a wattage, yeah, it's going to get hot, hot vapor in my mouth. This is a little bit cooler. So maybe there is a method to the madness. The Phantom Tank. I just keep going back to it because, like I said, those coil heads are so damn good. And if there was an easier way to fill this, which it sounds like they're fixing it, I would actually really enjoy this tank. So moving forward, uh, we're going to get into some advocacy. There's an Alabama update. Update on Alabama, and I saw a picture on Instagram that I was tagged in, but I couldn't find any more information about it. Uh, this person tagged me, knickknack underscore DSV, uh, tagged me and said, the bill for the Alabama tax on e-liquids is dead. And there's a picture of like a microphone and a podium and people all holding signs. Hey, that's fantastic. Uh, I don't know how to follow up on this. I'm going to try and look. So then I found the Breathe Easier Alliance of Alabama. It's an organization on Facebook, and they have an update on HB9. I want to start by saying that we have confirmed through multiple legislators that there is not an appetite in the state house for passing attacks on e-cigarettes or vape products. In other words, HB9 will not be considered for a vote in the special session. The members of the BEAA, which is the Breathe Easier Alliance of Alabama, have done a phenomenal job reaching out to our elected officials and educating them on the real facts of this industry and more than a hundred vape and e-cig users, retailers and wholesalers came to Montgomery today and met personally with legislators about the importance of Alabama's vape business to the economy and to overall public health. The battle is behind us but I'm sure it will come up again in the future. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you on August 30th for the BEAA meeting. So there you go. The BEAA uh, it seems, and the Vapors of Alabama has successfully convinced members of the state house to not uh, go after attacks on e-cigarette or vape products, which is just fantastic. So HB9 will not be considered for a special vote for a vote in the special session. Remember, we talked about special sessions last week or the week before. It's where they they resurrect these old bills and kind of force them through in these special sessions that are closed off to the public. So congratulations, Alabama. That's fantastic. Moving forward, California, not so fantastic. So California is still holding the special session. Uh, they're reintroducing six bills for the special session. AB5 and AB6 regulating electronic cigarettes to meet existing tobacco laws. AB6 and AB7 adding hotel lobbies, small businesses, break rooms, tobacco retailers to the list of smoke-free workplaces. AB7 and AB8 changing the legal smoking age from 18 to 21. You morons. SB8, AB9, requiring all schools to be tobacco-free zones. AB9 and AB10, allowing local jurisdictions to tax tobacco. And SB10 and AB11, creating an annual Board of Equalization Tobacco Licensing Fee Program. Creating an annual Board of Equalization Tobacco Licensing Fee Program. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Note that while most of these bills govern big tobacco products uh, instead of vapor products, the definition as it is being sought in SB5 and AB6 would make vapor products tobacco products and all such bills would automatically apply. That is uh, that is obscene. I'm going to post a link in the description, notblowingsmoke.org backslash session. They give you uh, a bunch of uh, kind of tips and how to contact and this that and the other and mark leno and ab6 and mr cooper who's doing that one and ask them to vote no on these bills there is no harm in reminding your representatives that you are a registered voter if you live in any of these districts represented by an elected official appointed for this session you can always look up your elected official and they have a link where you can do that and contact them directly to express your concerns they go on, it has a whole bunch of information. California Assembly, they list all the different districts. Uh, I believe I looked up on mine and it is uh, Senator Marty Block representing Senate District 39. That's me, that's my guy, Senator Marty Block. I'm gonna contact him, I'm gonna say, Senator, I urge you not to vote on this, 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 and this. 
because these, these, these reasons, because taxes, 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 this, that, and the other. That's what I'm gonna be doing today. But go to this website if you live in California, Find your, uh, you know, your Senate members, your assemblymen. They have all the Twitter handles, and they have a summary of all these bills. And there's a lot: SB5, AB6, SB6, AB7, SB7, AB8, SB8, AB9, SB9, AB10, SB10, AB11. That is ridiculous. And the first one, the worst one, that would retroactively make all of these other ones apply would define the term smoking for purposes of the STAKE Act. This bill would also change the Stake Act's definition of tobacco products to include electronic devices such as electronic cigarettes that deliver nicotine or other vaporized liquids and make furnishing such a tobacco product and make furnishing such a tobacco product to a minor a misdemeanor, sure. Uh, obviously, yeah, no underage sales. This bill contains other related provisions for existing laws. What I think is interesting is they say, include electronic devices such as electronic cigarettes that deliver nicotine or other vaporized liquids. That's how they cover the zero nick thing. So even zero nick juice, will be considered a tobacco product. That's how they squeaked it in there. Or other vaporized liquids, which means if you go to whatever, Walmart or Hobby Lobby, or you buy it on Amazon and you're just vaping, pure VG, that right there is considered a tobacco product. What? What, California? What? That is, look, I love California. I love this city. I love living here. It's fantastic. It is paradise. Uh, there are amazing people. There are amazing places. Our our government is, uh, it seems to be clueless. I just, it's like they're just blind walking around going, huh? What? Yeah, ban that. Tax that. Sure. It's all for the greater good. For the greater good. It's ridiculous. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can all get on this so yeah uh one thing that i wanted to talk about real quick as well moving forward we're already what 15 minutes into this vlog we're moving at a at a decently good little pace here safety oh my gosh safety so the other day i was doing vape fiddling and and a lot of what i do daily is just vape fiddling i'm always rebuilding, moving batteries around, charging, putting mods in different places, putting different atomizers on different mods, this, that, and the other, you know, vape sciencing for the purpose of, of my YouTube. I, I need to try things with different things and use things on different things. And sometimes I have setups that I really like and I, I keep them around. And sometimes I have setups that I dislike. And I'm like, what can I do to make this setup better? I'm, there's always fiddling. There's always fiddling going on. So the other day, I put, I had a tugboat, <clears throat> pardon me, I had a tugboat and I wanted to vape said tugboat because it had some sherbet in the dark juice in it and I said, I said to myself, self, I really want to vape this juice. So I put the tugboat on this mod, the sub -ohm box mod, the one that says vape like they're watching. I love this fucking thing. I love it. So I put the tugboat on here, screwed it all down, threw a battery in here right plunk threw a battery in there looked at my phone real fast because i got a notification i was like oh okay yeah i'll do that grab the other battery stuck it in here this is a parallel box mod which means your batteries have to be both facing the same direction and i did this once on my my box as well this one got much much worse i threw one battery in positive side up threw the other in positive side down and shut the lid and pressed the button and saw no voltage readout. And so I go, hmm, that's bizarre. Maybe my batteries are dead. Popped open the top. Gases and smoke are kind of just billowing out of the top portion. So I'm like, holy shit. So I slam the mod down on the ground, pop the batteries out. I run to the kitchen and grabbed a ceramic coffee cup and scooped the batteries up and took them outside that's exactly what happened the entire time they were just smoking 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 batteries and they were hot before i went and got my ceramic cup i i for 
some reason, because I mean, you know, you're in panic mode, I tried to pick them up, burned my finger, straight up burned my finger. They were too hot to physically touch. So I ran to the kitchen, I grabbed a ceramic coffee cup, I scooped up my batteries and I took them outside and just sat there feeling like a complete idiot, feeling so dumb watching these batteries vent. And it's not like I lost amazing batteries, they were E-Fest batteries. So here's the E-Fest batteries. This is probably the least damaged one, but the wrapping starts splitting off and melting. They expand when they vent, you see. Top seems to be mostly intact, but the but the wrapping on them starts melting. It's just plastic. That's why you can rewrap them because you can tear the plastic off, put a new one on, and heat shrink it on there. It's just plastic and they expand. They expand and start splitting that plastic open just like that. Obviously this battery will never ever get used again, but it was melting and it was, uh, you know, bad. It was venting. This one got it the worst. This one was hot and split open and then it actually popped open on the top. You can see that right there, melted. Let's get it in focus. Melted, the top came off. It was, uh, there was a lot of gas and whatnot coming from there. Look at that, that's no good. That is a dead, vented battery. And this wasn't, you know, this wasn't anything catastrophic. Uh, there was a lot of smoke and heat involved. I was worried about my carpet lighting on fire. This is just me doing something I've done a thousand times. How many times have in the last six years have I put a battery inside of a mod? Thousands, I mean, I'm guessing thousands of times. Probably tens of thousands of, well, maybe not tens of thousands of times. That's, that's a lot. Thousands of times, just thousands of times. And this was a time like no other. I was looking forward to vaping my favorite juice and my favorite atomizer on a great mod. I put the batteries in there, done, 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 done. I wasn't paying attention, I was careless, and I just threw it in there. And I feel like I'm giving some sort of OSHA speech because I have very vivid memories of working at the Starbucks manufacturing plant and having to sit through these horrible safety videos when the voiceover guy, he's just like, you do it a thousand times every day. You go into your office and you open the door, but little do you know that your computer just exploded. It's one of those things. It's absolutely true. It's something that I do every single day. I've done it thousands and thousands of times. And this time I did it wrong and I vented two batteries. And it could have been a lot worse. I mean, it could have been a lot worse than it was. Uh, it ruined the mod, unfortunately. Let me zoom back in here. And let me see if you can see the, the, uh, the top of this mod. Nope, you're not gonna be able to see that at all. But the contact on the top is, is dead. It's gone. It, it, melted. it melted the plastic sled in here. And that contact that was, uh, that was once there is completely gone. Additionally, the spring on this side is all crunchy and collapsed. The springs on both sides are crunchy and collapsed. This, this was the worst. This is where the battery actually vented inside the mod. It melted this whole top part of the plastic and it melted the uh, the contact is now down inside there. So, bummer. Uh, I actually really like using this mod. I liked the graphics on it, vape like they're watching. I loved the button. I basically liked everything about this mod and now not only can I not do a review for it, but it's dead. It's dead, I will no longer get to use this and uh, I kept it around because I wanted to show you danger, 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 battery safety. So people, just be careful. Yes, you have to worry about amp limits of your batteries when you're building atomizers. Yes, you have to worry about keeping them in pairs and charging them in pairs and using high drain, high amp limit batteries and do everything safe. And yes, Pay attention when you're putting your mod inside your batteries, especially if it's a parallel box, they have to both go up. If it's a series box, they have to be switched. 
Just be careful. Just be careful. Even if you've done something a thousand times, do it like you're doing it for the first time. Double check how your batteries are going into your mod because I would hate for this to happen to somebody else because it was honestly scary. I haven't vented a battery in a number of years. It's been a really long time and this was kind of like a, ah, uh, oh, shit, now, okay. Well, duh, now I'm obviously really going to pay attention. So yeah, battery safety first. Uh, what I want to do now after we've covered all of that stuff, Thomas and Tiffany, thank you for the beer, not blowing smoke, phantom tank update, Alabama update, battery venting. Now we're going to go over there to the beer section. <laughs> Who else is ready to taste some beer this evening? Holy crap, I know I am. I know I'm ready to taste some beer. So what 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 beer do I have? That's the major question. In fact, someone brought up a really kind of a cool idea that I never really thought about. Um, is to post like a week ahead of time. So like at the end of this vlog, say that next week I'm going to taste this beer. So whoever, you know, wants to kind of join in and do the beer tasting with me, we could be drinking the same beer, uh, which is pretty cool. So maybe towards the end of this video, I'll decide, you know, what maybe what beer we're going to taste next week. And then everybody can go out to their stores and go to their BevMo's and, and pick up that same beer. But the beer we have this week I uh, might not accomplish that task. I don't know if this is widely available anywhere. I got another Modern Times beer. So every once in a while, Modern Times does these uh, special releases where they do a brand new beer or they do a variation of another existing beer that's in their year-round lineup. That's the case in this case. <laughs> it's part of their... So they have one in their regular lineup called Fortunate Islands. And if you look for Fortunate Islands on Beer Advocate, it's got a very, very high score. It's got a 93% uh, score on, 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 on Beer Advocate, these Fortunate Islands from Modern Times Beer. Uh, they describe it as hoppy, a hoppy, zesty wheat beer, which tonight it's August. This is their August release, so it's a summertime beer. It's hot as balls in here. It may not look like it on video. You might be sitting in like a nice air-conditioned office or like a nice air-conditioned living room. I am sweating my balls off in my office right now. It's just hot. So SoCal just gets, it just gets hot. And this is perfectly going to perfectly hit the, hit the spot for me. But this is the Fortunate Islands with Grapefruit Zest. So they, they they took a hoppy, zesty wheat beer and then they added grapefruit zest to it. I'm really excited about this. I'm really, really excited about this. This comes obviously out of San Diego, California. Fortunate Islands with Grapefruit Zest. Look at that, no cork, no cork. So I'm gonna take my Snap-on uh, bottle opener. I'm gonna open this. I like to smell things. I don't know why, I just smell things. Smells super grapefruity. Even just the bottle smells like grapefruit rind or something in there. I'm going to be pouring this into a traditional tulip style glass, generally over my keyboard. It's a very, very light, light uh, sort of yellowy beer. Looks like a PBR or Takati or like even like a hard cider or something like that. Nice, thick, uh, about an inch worth of head on there. Seems to be dissipating. Seems effervescent when I pour it. It looks effervescent in the glass. Yeah, wow, it smells like grapefruit. Um, the overwhelming smell is grapefruit, and I don't generally like grapefruit. I like grapefruit in things. In vapes, especially, I like citrus. I like grapefruits. In beers, I like citrus. I like grapefruits, lemon, limes, those zesty flavors. Even in coffee, like an Ethiopian coffee with those with those you know sparkling top notes of lemon and, and citrus, I like it. Will I ever sit down and eat a grapefruit? <laughs> Not on your life. You know what my favorite grapefruit flavor is? Does anybody get those like, I haven't had these in so long, those sun-kissed gummy jelly things? They were like little discs in a pack 
and they were gummy and it was like lime, cherry, lemon, and then they did like grape and like grapefruit, the white ones. Mm, those were my favorite. So the head's dissipated so that I can drink through it. Uh, I guess if it's a smaller head, you drink through it not like a man or you still drink through it like a man, but you're less of a man. I, I don't really know. Modern times, fortunate islands with grapefruit zest. Cheers. Here's to you. Wow, it's delicious. But yeah, it's it's grapefruit. You actually get some like different sort of tropical flavors in there. Like it's kind of like a like a pineapple y mango grapefruit flavor. Uh, of course they have a ridiculous description on that on this. Fortunate Islands is the citrusy, citra loaded, bomb diggity, hoppy wheat beer that we brew year round. This marvelously grapefruity variation on it came about when we made a few one off kegs uh, with intemperate quantities of grapefruit zest back in 2013. The results were so painfully refreshing and amazingly awesome that we knew we had to make some more. So here it is, a special release that tastes like summer and goes with everything. Literally, literally goes with everything. Modern Times is making that, making that, uh, making that claim. It's good. It's clean. It's bright. It is citrusy. I do get grapefruit, but I do get other like strange tropical notes in there as well. That is amazing. This, this is such a good summer beer august it's hot southern california the oceans that way i want to go to the beach in the summertime and i want to drink this beer it's tropically refreshing it's grapefruit citrusy i still swear i get some sort of other tropical flavors in there but it's very very clean it doesn't have a heavy mouth it doesn't feel heavy like right now if i was this temperature that i currently am and i was drinking like an organic chocolate stout or like an imperial stout or something it would just be like oh, like so heavy in your gut this not not a chance it's delicious mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i actually do have a a juice that would go pretty well with this so this is the petri version 1.5 sitting atop the joe lit 44 mod this is an own boy oc tears in heaven build on here and i have some very refreshing uh, juice that I got from Miss Amanda M. This is uh, this is the pink chill, and I think the pink chill is going to go just spectacular with this with this uh, with this beer. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That's a good pairing. Mm. Oh, that is good. That is just delicious. I'm going to bring a bottle of this. I'm going to bring a bottle of this with me up to ECC uh, for Ruguru to taste, along with that uh, other special release they did, the Mega Black House. I just want her to taste it. She's like my beer gauge. Like, I, I want her to enjoy things that I enjoy. And I'm like, do you like it? Do you like it? Oh, you do? You don't? You do? Okay, good. You do. So, yeah definitely bringing a bottle of this to ECC. Uh, it's great because Modern Times comes to the farmer's market that's like literally two blocks away from me. So on Saturdays, walk down to the farmer's market, you get coffee, you get your vegetables or whatever, your paninis, and then you buy beer. And it's just fantastic. But yeah, that's it. That's what I got for beer. And uh, I'm assuming uh, once again from here, we'll probably move to shout outs. It is shout out time. So yeah, that was beer. Good times. One thing I haven't even talked about, I got a new cabinet. I got a new uh, bookshelf. I had an old bookshelf there. The bookshelf is gone. I went to Ikea. I got a new uh, bookshelf for all my storage. It holds uh, so much stuff. It holds everything I need. And then my brother bought me a uh, Han Solo Frozen and Carbonite door poster. So boom, it's in the glass cabinet. It's fantastic. It holds 
so much stuff. It's a big double door thing. I've got shelves. I've got all my juice in boxes now. It's just fantastic. Go to Ikea. I think it's called the Billy. I think it's called the Billy Cabinet. And uh, yeah, so this is what we're going to see from now on. Han Solo, Frozen and Carbonite. Totally cool. I'm thinking about getting a couch. Putting a couch back here. Like that would be a cool thing and kind of rearranging all this nonsense you'll see it evolves i mean all my offices they've always evolved over time into into whatever they are but i do want to do some quick shout outs it's not about that what i want to do right now is a couple quick shout outs um this vlog is already going to be way too long i promised a shout out to the notos cloud chasers on facebook i was contacted by them on facebook they're doing a raffle to benefit families of the fallen Noto's Cloud Chasers, and I'll post the link in the description to the Facebook uh, where you can get in on this raffle. Sponsors, uh, Vapor Island, Joko Juice, Smart Spark. We've come together to raffle off a Lotus 80 watt, a Segeli 75 watt, a Snow Wolf 200, and 210 mils of juice to raise money for the Chattanooga Shooting Victims Families. $5 per ticket, unlimited purchases. Uh, starts July 27th, on, ends on August 31st. All donations are obviously welcome. To purchase tickets, go to Vapor Island in Chattanooga. Oh, you have to be in Chattanooga or Georgia. Ah, so okay. So you not everybody can get in on this. If you're in Chattanooga, Tennessee, or in Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, then absolutely you can go. Uh, you can go buy uh, buy some raffle tickets and help out the uh, the victims of the of the shooting there, which was obviously yes, very horrible. Additionally, uh, M Sierra Light uh, writes to me. I think this came via YouTube. I don't speak English at all, so I'm sorry for my not understanding. Ending. Totally good. My name is Andrew and I was smoking from 2008 and then I was 15 years old. I kept smoking for five years until I was 21. December 2013 when I went met my girl when I met my girlfriend and she was a non-smoker and she said that when I will go smoking then just go but don't when you are with me. There you go. That makes sense, sense to me actually. So I bought an Ego CE4 100 mAh battery and it was just great with my 18 milligrams of nicotine. Five months after uh, that I got a Kanger Pro Tank with a 1.8 ohm coil head and it isn't rocking and and it's rocking until 11th of January 2014 a year when I started vaping. I don't use vape at all but I will buy iStick 50 watt and a Kanger sub tank and vape and vape and vape and vape. <laughs> You can take shout out for me and my girlfriend to Europe, Europe to a small city, Kos, Kos, I can't pronounce the name of your city, I apologize there, sir, Slovakia. Thank you, keep on vaping. Absolutely, consider yourself shouted out there in Slovakia. I'm, uh, I'm amazed that there is, is one person, let alone uh, more than one person in Slovakia, that is currently uh, watching my videos. I think that's just fantastic. Absolutely, uh, consider yourself shouted out and keep up uh, keep up the good work. I, I run into that a lot of people who are smokers. They get a girlfriend who is not a smoker, and the girlfriend goes, "Hey, that's really fucking gross." And the guy goes, "Yeah, I, I know it's really gross. I'll start. I'll try vaping." And that's how pe sometimes people get into vaping. It's just because of relationships. So I do have uh, another shout out that I wanted to do. There's a very important one from Crystal, but there was also one from Darth Drips. Hey Grim, my name is Michael. You gave my girlfriend Marie and I a shout out, which was fucking awesome, unfortunately. Uh, made a wording error that was quite embarrassing, lol. Anyway, I just wanted to show you where I put your stickers. Uh, one is on my MacBook, two are on my guitar case, and one is on my snare drum, which I've heard if you put a Grim Army sticker on your snare drum, the snare drum just sounds perfect. Just perfectly tunes your snare drum without even having to try. I have two more, which I am still deciding where to place. Donut Pounder is my favorite flavor, so I have made many purchases. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, thanks again, brother. Hope to meet you someday. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, he's got the, the Grim Army sticker on his snare drum and on his guitar case and on his MacBook. I think that's just cool. Absolutely consider yourself shouted out. There was another guy who had stickers. He put a sticker on his... Uh, 
uh, you know, what's that called? Toolbox sort of says it's one of those big industrial toolboxes. He's got like a stormtrooper, the silver surfer, the Autobot symbol, and then a Grim Army sticker. There's literally nothing I I dis I dislike about this picture. It is it's perfect. It's a perfect picture. Grim Army, Stormtrooper, Silver Surfer, Transformers. Thought I'd show off. Uh, writes to me, Clint. I thought I'd uh, thought I'd show off my Grim Army sticker and show you my super glitchy IPv4 <laughs> stickers around my toolbox at work uh, thought it was fitting to go with the stormtrooper my glitchy IPv4 did this after less than five minutes of use after being purchased thanks for all the videos and the yeah he has delicious juice lines yes he has super glitchy IPv4 wow super glitchy it just looks like alien writing it's just chaos I apologize Clint consider yourself shouted out hope you were able to get that taken care of so this uh, this this message comes to me from crystal this is this is a heartbreaking uh, this is a heartbreaking email, so I'm going to read this, I'm going to get through this, and uh, I'll have a link in the description. Uh, Crystal, I'm going to lean over as well. Crystal writes to me and says, Hi Nick, my husband was such a huge fan of yours. Unfortunately, he passed away at the tender age of 33, very unexpectedly, on July 14th, just two weeks ago. I was looking through various pictures of him when I came across this one of you two together in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. My husband's name was Michael, and he was disabled with spina bifida. He couldn't walk well, so most days he sat in his recliner. And when he wasn't spending time with his three kids or me watching movies, he was watching your videos. He was such a fan of yours that when he found out you were coming to North Carolina, he looked forward to it and talked about it every day until the date came. He refused to bring his cane inside. He was supposed to walk with one all the time because he wanted to meet you without looking disabled. Even though I told him no one would care if he had a cane, he was so excited to meet you and get your autograph. In fact, that's the only reason he came. He was in a lot of physical pain back then, especially while being on his feet. As soon as he was able to meet you and talk to you and get your autograph, he was ready to go. It was literally all he came for. You were so nice to him. And that moment meant so much to him. And in turn to me, I had to write you and tell you, thank you for that. Uh, he talked about that moment all the time. It's heavy. I mean, that's heavy stuff. Uh, I actually do remember meeting him. Uh, super nice guy. I mean, everybody I meet is super nice. And, and he was a super nice guy. Uh, can you please keep myself and our three kids in your thoughts or prayers? If you remember from talking to Michael, I'm a food blogger. I was out of town in New York City at the time of his death. Insane. I mean, this is so heartbreaking. I can't even finish it. That's horrible. That's 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 horrible. Um, a lot of this goes on to be... Uh, very personal. Uh, I don't want to put everything out there that she wrote me, but needless to say, Crystal's had a really hot, really, really rough time. Um, and absolutely, Crystal, consider yourself shouted out. Absolutely, uh, Michael, consider yourself shouted out uh, just forever. Just every vlog, we shout out Michael. That's what we do from now on. Um, she finishes by saying, oh my goodness, I set out to write you a short email and I've written you a book. I'm just a mess right now. Uh, thank you for helping light up my husband's life. He thought so highly of you. Uh, and there's a link in the description uh, to if you, <laughs> to uh, read on Fox uh, the story of this, of what happened. It's, you know, it it's heartbreaking. And I, I promised Crystal... That I would give her uh, and her husband Michael a shout out, and absolutely, absolutely consider yourself shouted out. Um, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now, other than I'm so sorry for your loss. It's, it's literally heartbreaking. So, so moving forward, Crystal, 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 keep your chin up. I hope things get better for you. We're gonna move forward. We're gonna end the. We're gonna end the shoutouts there. Uh, I just need to take a second. We need to end the shoutouts there. What we're gonna do after after those shoutouts? What we're gonna do now? Some first impressions. 
All right, let me pull myself together here to get some first impressions done. So uh, I did receive some stuff this week. The first thing I wanted to talk about is this. Let me get an atomizer attached to it. So this came from me via Vape Fiends, and I'll try to find who else is selling it online if you're so interested in trying to find it. I got this at VaporCon West, and I haven't had a chance to talk about it yet on video. Oh, shoot. I'm gonna need juice. Haven't had a chance... I'm a mess. Why didn't I set this up ahead of time? Haven't had a chance to talk about it on video. It does have a, an adjustable 510. It's this little box. It's called the Zion. The Zion box. Yep, there we go. Now it's hitting. Double 18650 mechanical box. It's kind of like uh, the Dos Equis, kind of like the Castigador box. Little box. Delrin in the middle, stainless steel on the top and bottom, and it has a full mechanical button right there. And when I first saw this, I'm like, shit, man, that's so cool. And I'm like, I'm really excited to try this. I'm excited to get back to my hotel room and give this a whirl. And then I put some batteries in it, which is kind of a pain in the ass because you have to unscrew kind of like the vapor flask. I mean, it's not an, an obscene pain in the ass, but it's a lot like the vapor flask. You have to unscrew these on the bottom. They screw in and out. And you can't just do them finger tight. You kind of have to get a screwdriver and, and lock them down. And they don't sit in any particular fashion. This is a strange box. And it's a strange box because of the button. Do you see the button on top? It's recessed down. And it's hard to press hard to press so I find myself gripping it with my pinky here and you have to really angle your thumb and get it in there it is hard and it hurts my pinky to grip it like this between your pinky and your thumb because you have to angle your thumb so hard in there hits like a beast hits great I'm just having a really difficult time with this button. Um, the way that I found to vape it, which defeats the purpose of having a detonator style thumb button, it, I can't. I don't have enough strength in my thumb to press this down from that angle. Is holding it like this and then using my finger to press it down. And even then, it's still, I, it hurts my finger. Like after one or two drags, one or two toots, it hurts my finger. It hurts my thumb to use and it hurts my finger to use. I'm going to try to find some more information for this uh, online. I know it came to me from Vape Fiends, but they only do wholesale. So I'm not sure who is selling this or how much it costs. But I've been trying to figure out a way to use it that is comfortable. Right now, nothing is comfortable. Not even the finger technique. Because you have to really crank that button down. And it's not like it's just a hard spring. It's like you get to the ending point right there. And then you press it down to really to make that contact. It's a flat switch hitting a flat surface. And so you have to pop that down and really get it to press. This is one way that kind of works. If you hold it like this, even then, it sucks. <laughs> the button on this is, I don't know why it's recessed. If it was protruding out, like even half an inch, it would be so much better. So much better if it was protruding out rather than recessed. And I took it apart and I thought, well, maybe there's an adjustment in there. Like you can adjust where your button is. No, not a chance. I took this all the way apart. It comes apart really easily. There's one screw in the bottom and the whole thing basically comes apart. It's one big long screw that goes up the center. Basically the whole thing comes apart. It's really soft and nice and comfortable to hold and if I could use it correctly, I would be digging this a lot more than I am. Look how good it looks right there with that Sapor atomizer on there. Got a little bit of a gap, but you can adjust the 510 on it. I just haven't found a comfortable way to hold it. You really got to crank that fucking button down. 
hasn't been getting a lot of use because it's really, really fucking uncomfortable to hold and to use. I'm going to try to track down some more information. I'm going to try to reach out to Vape Fiends and see if there's any sort of fix or softer spring or something. It doesn't need to be that difficult to press. As it stands, it's difficult. And the side of this is sharp. It's it's a sharp edge, and it just digs into my finger every time I try to press that button down. It's just hard. It's just hard to press. I'm gonna, obviously, yeah. I'm gonna spend some more time with it. But man, it's been uh, it's been kind of upsetting me using it. So I got something else that I want to talk about. I got two TC devices that came in. This is the uh, Segeli 150 temperature control. Kind of just an odd looking box. It's not like anything that I've seen them do before. The other Segeli non TCs were just uh, were just you know boxes they were square and i loved the 150 the 150 will probably go down in history as one of my favorite devices of all time but i've got an e-leaf eye just on here with a nickel coil head uh 50 joules 503 degrees It's not a bad little box. Double 18650 configuration. The door is snug, slides off. There's two magnets that hold it in place. This is running in series, so one goes up, one goes down, positive up, positive down. I'm using their own Segeli batteries in there, which I can only assume are rewraps of something else. The door does stay on nice, and it does have this slightly slightly soft matte rubbery finish it it's obscenely comfortable to hold obscenely comfortable to hold it just fits in your hand so well I, I don't I wish I kind of just wish this was just a box like I wish it didn't have this little up ramp part and then over I just wish this cut right over like it was just a box I don't know it, it looks interesting at least it's super comfortable to hold so far the temperature control has been ah top notch I haven't actually used this yet as just a as just a 150 watt device but if we head over here to my vapor store we can read some specs on it uh, 10 to 150 watts uh, it only does 50 joules though in nickel and that might be the same as you know, uh, the IPVs where if you're using titanium, it'll go up to 150 or 100 watts. Um, resistance reads down to 0 0.1, which that's very interesting. That's interesting that it reads down to 0 0.1. I think that's good. I wonder if it does it in regular wattage mode. Like I need to, like I said, I need to spend way more time with this before I feel comfortable talking about it. There's some vape science to be done. No charging port, so you take your batteries in and out. Uh, 35 amp limit, takes two 18650s. Temperature range is 212 to 572. Spring-loaded 510 connection, magnetic battery compartment door, reverse battery protection, low voltage protection, high input high voltage warning chip runs cool to avoid overheating adjustable wattage temperature control functionality and there's already a review for it these just got sent out to reviewers come on you can't do a review after a week you just can't you can't do a review after a couple days sorry i'll get off my soapbox now but good god let's slow down here china's just taken over they, they're taking over they send out one shiny new thing and everybody goes ape shit for a full week and then that's it, people don't care about it anymore. Me, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time with this device, get to know it a little bit uh, a little bit better. I do, I've always liked the Segeli uh, display on there. I've always liked the grid display where it shows you your amps, your voltage, your joules, and your wattage, and then a little battery indicator. I think that looks very, very cool. Like I said, this is really, really comfortable to hold and to use. No rattling, no buttons that rattle. The buttons are all in there very, very nice. Nothing rattles. It feels very strong, very secure. And it reminds me of this other TC device that I have that I got from Dovpo. Everybody remember Dovpo? They did the, uh, you know, what was that weird? The ELVT, the ELVT that I did a review for a while back. Well, they have the Guardian version 1.5 that is their temperature control. And let's get to their, uh, let's get to the website and read about this Dovpo. Where are you at, Dovpo? 
uh, Breathe, Segeli, Kennedy. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second. Vapor DNA. Dovpo, the Guardian 1.5. And of course, I'll have a link in the description. So it says temperature control up to 600 degrees. Uh, it's made out of a zinc alloy, 3 to 150 watts, nickel 200 atomizer working resistance, 0.1 to 1 ohm, normal atomizer working resistance, 0.1 to 3 ohms, maximum output current, 39 amps, working voltage, 6 to 4 volts, 6 to 8.4 volts. And it has, it has the classic like Dovpo super, super rubberized finish. I mean, insanely super rubberized finish. It makes it feel very, very hefty, very, very sturdy, and the finish on it is super rubbery. Whereas this feels like it's a very thin layer over metal. This feels like a very, I mean, you can see these ridges on here, hopefully. Very, very rubbery, very, very rubbery rigid. In fact, there's some slight flashing like uh it didn't get cut all the way correctly over the the mirrored for some reason mirrored display when i press the button oh the so the dovpo does the thing this guardian 1.5 does the thing where if you don't use it for 30 minutes it turns itself off you can see degrees wattage you can actually see the display okay behind the mirrored finish but Come on, knock it off with the mirrored finishes. That is, I mean, it looks cool when it's off, but it's hard It's hard to read. And it shows you your ohms, your wattage, your amps, and how many seconds you just took a toot for, as well as your temperature. So this is the Smoke Tech uh, VCT nickel coil head. I have it at 520 degrees. Why is it 26 watts? Oh, no, no. That's... So the wattage it's showing you on here is how high it got previously. The weird thing that this Dovpo does, that this Guardian 1.5 does, is when it starts getting too high in temperature, it spits. It doesn't spit juice, it goes you know how the snow wolf, I haven't done a review of the snow wolf, maybe the snow wolf will not be next week, maybe the snow wolf will be after that. The Snow Wolf, when you get up to too high of a wattage, 150, to, 150 watts and up, it automatically helicopters on you. It goes, this, no matter what I set it at, will get a smooth vape at first, and then it starts going, okay, didn't do it that last time, and I tried to take a really long drag. Let's see if it does it this time. You hear it? You hear it helicoptering? It's like, tf, 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 tf. and I guess that's from too high of a temperature or no juice on the coils. I uh, I find that uh, personally annoying when I'm only running 25 watts, 520 degrees. I feel like that shouldn't happen. And when I put this temperature control tank on any other device, with temperature control, it feeds the juice perfectly and doesn't do that helicopter thing. I think it's really odd. I think it's really odd. Additionally, what's really odd about this is the batteries. So you have to use a screwdriver. I'm going to use this tiny one. And you flip this little switch to unlock it. And then this slides completely out. And then you have your batteries. And these are in series. So this one goes positive side down this one goes positive side up perfect and then you slide this back in here like a little clip and then you lock it and you can't lock it with just your finger it's very very strong what that's doing is it's pressing against when you lock it a little thing presses out and holds your batteries in snug no rattle at all of anything in fact this mod feels so incredibly strong and beefy like i could just throw it or if i like dropped it off of my porch it wouldn't it wouldn't harm it in any way it's so rubberized i just don't understand why it does that like thing it's really bizarre oh i took the batteries out 
I took the batteries out and it resets everything. It resets your temperature, it resets your ohms, and it resets your wattage. So let's, oh God. Great, that was great. It didn't helicopter, it just gave me a really good vape. I don't know. We're gonna get to know that mod obviously a lot better as the days uh, as the days pass. And I have two other things that I want to talk about in first impressions. Actually, three because no one's seen this cult mods yet. We'll talk about that next week. We'll talk about the cult mods next week. The jury's out on the cult mods at the moment, but we're gonna talk about the cult mods next week. What I have that I really want to talk about is the Kennedy 24 millimeter atomizer on there? So Kennedy, Mr. Machinist, Mr. Steve the Machinist, came out with a new atomizer, and mine's getting heavily tarnished because it's brass. But this is the Kennedy 24 millimeter atomizer. It's not, it's not 22. It's 24. He basically designed this to fit on box mods, of which it fits on box mods perfectly. It's got the same styled deck as the original Kennedy, which means the airflow comes in the bottom and goes up, and then on the deck the airflow continues to go up through these little tubes that are on there. And so if you dump a bunch of juice on your deck, it's not gonna leak out the bottom because there's tubes where the airflow is, which is blocking off your deck from leaking. And now the airflow, instead of going straight down, goes out. You can see these big openings right there, and they go out. Those big openings go down and out. The airflow is stellar. Additionally, what he changed on the deck was the posts. So before on the old Kennedys, the posts were offset. The two on the sides were lower and the one in the middle was really high. So you had to build like these kind of weird angled coils or it was just weird. I didn't like that the center posts hole was higher than the two negative post holes. On this, they're even. They're just even straight across. It's fantastic. Um, this isn't my build on here. Dwayne did a, uh, Ombo Yak did a, a, like a Tears in Heaven type of dual fused Clapton on here. Uh, the flavor's been fantastic. Nice, big, swooshy, open airflow. The flavor is great because it comes from the bottom. It's just, it tastes good. The coils are good. I've actually really been enjoying this. Um, what I would love, now the whole deck is brass, and the center post is copper. And I know there's people, eh, maybe I'm included in these people, they get weary of brass touching e-liquid. The whole deck is brass. What I want is a full stainless steel one. I don't need a full brass one. What I would love is a full stainless steel 24 millimeter Kennedy, 24 millimeter, and that would be rad. I'm gonna put a link in the description to his website, to the Kennedy 24. Now, we'll talk about this when we actually get to a review. Maybe the prices will change. The Kennedy 24, $105. This item is currently sold out, so if you go there, you can't get there. But it's releasing the 15th of August, $105. New Kennedy design, closed deck, bottom airflow, 22 millimeter outer diameter, larger build deck, larger air chamber, larger juice well, no leaking in hybrids, fits most box mods 510 threading. There you go. I'll post a link in the description to where you can check it out if you're so interested. I have really been enjoying it, but I haven't built on it yet. And that's the problem is I had Omboyak put a sweet build on this and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, this is rad. And now I have to build on it. So that means I have to take his sweet build off. And that really bums me out. But it's just been fantastic. We'll talk about that cult mods next week because I do wanna talk about this tank. So I posted a picture on Instagram of the Thundercloud tank. Let's get over to the thundercloud. Thunderstorm. Why do I keep calling it the thundercloud? I called it the thunderclap thundercloud. It's the thunderstorm tank from Thunderhead Creations. Too many thunders. This is a $50 sub ohm tank. It does come with its own rebuildable head, rebuildable base in there, which I'm not a fan of, but we'll get there when we get to the review. I'm not a fan of it. The first coil head that I put in here was just awful. Just leaked, leaked leaked everywhere. I put it on a mod, I filled it up and I was vaping on it. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm gonna go to bed. And so I put it on my shelf over here, came in here the next morning to fire up my computer and start working. And then I saw that the tank was just empty and my mod was sitting 
in a big puddle of juice. And I went, God damn it. Ugh. Juice didn't get inside the mod, thankfully. I was able to spend the next 15 minutes cleaning up the e-liquid mess and the tank had emptied myself and emptied itself. And so I put it to the side and I said, F you, thunderstorm. That just made me so mad. I'm going to vape on something that doesn't leak. Well, yesterday I got around to fiddling again like I always do. I was taking apart tanks, putting other ones together, rebuilding atomizers, trying new juices. I looked at the thunderstorm tank and I went, okay, you get a second chance right now to prove yourself. Put a new coil head in there. It's been good. I've gone through two tanks of juice now with no leaking. I'm using a really thick VG heavy juice, 90% VG. It hasn't leaked. What I had in there before was 70% VG and it leaked all over the place. Right now with 90% VG, it is not leaking. I'm actually, this is a 0.12 ohm coil head and I'm running it on a Tug Life unregulated box mod and the performance has been top notch. I'll post the link in the description to Vapor DNA where you can check that out if you're so interested. But yeah, it, it was kind of hit and miss for me at first there. And the deck, if you want to talk about the deck real fast, the RBA deck, I have it somewhere in here. Oh, Lord. What the hell? Ha-ha! Success. This is the RBA base. And it's just a base. It looks a lot like a lot of other bases that are out there. Four post design, tiny little screws. That, that hole is drilled incorrectly. Wow, wow, wow. I have to post a picture of that on Instagram. That hole, those holes are all fucky. They are all fucked up. The problem that I'm having with this is the chimney is a one piece chimney which means the way that I like to wick things, like the Zephyrus, like the Goblin Mini, is you wick it, you pull the wicks up through here, you snip them off and you stuff them down, and then you screw on the rest of the chimney. With this one piece chimney design, no, that's not an option. You don't get to do that. You don't get to pull your wicks up, snip them and stuff them back down. You have to do that really obnoxious thing where you try to place them over the juice flow holes on top of threads and then hopefully when you screw this down that threading doesn't grab your wicks and pull them all around come on two piece chimney design this is something we've been talking about forever since the first what was that other tank that came out oh i can't remember the name of the tank i bought it at vapor venue what was the name of the tank? What was the name of the tank? I can't remember the name of the tank. It's something we've been talking about for a while. The K Fun, since it came out, has had a two piece chimney. I don't know why things are still being made that don't have a friggin' two piece chimney. It's not that hard to do. It's super easy to do. Uh, that's really what they should have done with this. But we're gonna try that RBA base in there and uh, hopefully not fail miserably at life. So. I'm gonna get some of this vapor out of here. We did all our first impressions. We did some very heart-wrenching shout outs. We did beer, we did all that stuff. This vlog is already running long, but before I end it, I do wanna do some retro vaping. So I, I, I go eat a bowl of cereal in between segments and I do to video editing, you're none the wiser, but I went and ate a bowl of cereal. I turned on my air conditioning to get the, all the vapor out of here. And then I just sat back down and started vaping again like crazy. I, I don't know, made no sense. I'm like, why did I spend all that time getting vapor out of here? Now there's vapor in here, doesn't matter. What we're gonna do right now is retro vape. And this retro vaping isn't super old. I uploaded, I uploaded my review of this device back in 2013. It must have been summer of 2013. Was it? Uh, I mean, it might have been fall of 2013. I'm talking about this. This is the Nemesis Mech Mod. So this is the first really nice Mech Mod that I ever owned. Now, I had a Silver Bullet Omega, which was a Mech Mod. But this was the first like, like high-end, fancy, 
mech mod that I ever owned. And it, I saw it when it got out of the box, and I'm just like, I remember saying, this is too nice for me to own. I shouldn't own this. This is too nice for me to own. But I used it, and, you know, over time, it got super, super scratched up. The brass became just dull. When I first got it, it looked like a freaking, whoops. When I first got it, it just looked like a trumpet. Like, it was so brassy and shiny, and it just looked beautiful. And I didn't have any RDAs back then when I first got this. And so I was using it with, like, a K-Fun. I was using it with Cardo Tank still because it had an adjustable airflow in the top where you could line these two holes up with each other, and they had a little adjustable airflow in there. And... It was fantastic. I thought it was so cool. And it came with an extra little sleeve so that you could use a kick in it. So I remember using a kick and a K-Fun in this. And it was that was it. I was just sold. I thought it was so freaking cool. And I don't know why I just took it all apart into a million pieces. But what I'm going to do is put this back together. I'm going to bring it back into 2015 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an Aeolus V2. And I'm going to screw it on here. Oh, wow. Now that is a long center post. Aeolus V2. I'm gonna put my, ooh. That is, uh, that's a long center post. Do you see how long that's sticking out? I don't know if this is gonna work. I might have to try a different RDA on here. Put the battery in. Oh, it'll work. Oh yeah, it'll work. It'll work fine. It just will look silly. So, <laughs> I wonder if I can use this to cover up a little bit of the threads on there. So the Aeolus V2 sticks out so far that here, I'm gonna let me just try to uh, let me just try to show you. This is supposed to sit flush, <laughs> somewhat flush with the bottom, and you can see there's threads poking out on the bottom. That's how long this Aeolus V2 is. But oh, it's good and it fires. Let me get some juice in here. Let me make sure this is juiced up before I vape it. See, now I just want to go back to every friggin' mech mod that I have and just, like, stuff that I haven't vaped since 2013. Like, mech mods that never got to use sub-ohm coils on them or never got to use a sweet RDA like the Aeolus V2 on it. Yeah, still hits pretty hard. Now, the Nemesis had a very, very, very sort of loyal cult following. There were people getting Nemesis t-shirts, and I saw a guy that got the Nemesis Angel of Death or whatever on it. Like, this Angel Reaper logo, like, tattooed on him. Like, the Nemesis fans were crazy about the Nemesis. They just loved the Nemesis. And I got it. I fell in love with it. I thought it was a great, great mech mod. And here in 2015, I have this Aeolus on here with the super long, super long center post. And yeah, the Nemesis doesn't really hold up well to that. As you can see, there's threads sticking out of the bottom. And that was the great thing about the Nemesis was the way you adjusted it. So you put an atomizer on the top cap and you screwed the contact up. And then that's it. You put your battery on, you put your switch on, and it was like a slightly telescoping. Like, you just rotated your switch to take up for the battery rattle, and that was it. And it worked. And I can see the spring. That's how far this, <laughs> that's how far this switch is sticking out the bottom. I'll be 100% honest with you. It's not hitting as hard as some other mech mods that I have right now. And this is a fresh battery. I feel like this Nemesis has quite a voltage drop on it. It's not getting any hot buttons. It's not getting anything like that. And so I looked online and I tried to track down where you could get a Nemesis. All I can find is the clone. Fast Tech sells a $16 Nemesis clone. That's it. $15.89. Oh, it's out of stock. I wonder where we can find a Nemesis. Nemesis Mech Mod. I looked all over Google. I couldn't find anything. All I could find was the Fast Tech. And now it's out of stock. The Nemesis Mod may not exist anymore. Let's try Google Shopping. Go away. I hate it when ads pop up on websites. Like, dude, I'm already on your website. You don't need to advertise to me. Uh, so they have a Nemesis for 55 bucks, And it looks like it's in stock. 
I don't know. I feel like uh, there's quite a bit of voltage drop on this here old uh, Nemesis machine, but for its time, it was a very expensive, high-end, very sleek mech mod, and this is when tube mechs were hitting really hard, like 2013 all through 2014, the tube mech is what ruled the vaping world. People were producing all these super high-end mech mods, and there's still a lot of people producing these high-end mech mods. And if you go to, you know, a vape meet, I was just at Vape Capital Vape Meet um, for the Cloud Comp qualifiers, everybody's rocking tube mods. Everybody's rocking tube mods. I had a box, and I felt out of place because everybody else was, literally everybody else was rocking a tube mech mod. Tube mech mods, dude. The Nemesis. The Nemesis is real, and I'm vaping on it currently. And I remember I was driving in my car one time, and I had a K-Fun on here, and I didn't lock the switch, and the switch was so soft that I put it in my cup holder, and I got music, like, cranked, and I'm, like, driving through Reno, no big deal, and I smell menthol banana, which is glacier banana, so I smell bananas, and I'm like... Did I get juice on myself? What happened? And I look down and there's just vapor coming out of my K-Fun drip tip. And I grab the Nemesis and it's hot. I'm like, ha! And so I set it down and I'm looking at it as I'm driving because I can't fiddle with it while I'm driving. I'm like, shit, shit, it's gonna, it's leaking juice everywhere. It's, you know, the batteries are gonna die. It's, there's vapor happening everywhere. The switch is gonna break. The spring's gonna melt. Didn't, didn't happen. All I did was, I stopped, I went into a bathroom, I washed off the juice that was on the outside, and I reattached my K-Fun, took a vape, wasn't even gurgly, put it all back together, let it cool down, and it worked amazingly. Like, nothing catastrophic happened from that, but holy crap, that was a scary moment. So yeah, there we go. We did some, uh, some retro vaping with the Nemesis. What I'm trying to do is track down some silica wick, you see. I'm trying to build uh, for a retro vape coming up. I'm trying to build, I'm gonna use what we had back in 2013, which was silica wick and like 28 gauge canthal. That's what I'm gonna build on like an Igo L with that build and uh, I'm gonna vape it. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna vape it. And so I need, I used to have these spools of silica wick. You know what, I might still have some spools of silica wick. I'm gonna have to really dig in there but I think I remember recently seeing a spool of silica wick. Anyway, that's what I have planned for a future retro vape segment is uh, grabbing out an old Igo L rebuildable atomizer and building on there with some 28 gauge and some silica wick. But that's, that's what I got uh, for retro vaping. This vlog is already way too long. I had a viewer mail lined up, but I think I'm just gonna call it good on this vlog. It's it's been a long vlog. I talked at the beginning a lot, and I'm continuing to just ramble currently. Um, I did have something. Okay, I, here's 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 something. Here's what we'll wrap the vlog up with. It's not quite over yet. Here's what we'll wrap it up. Um, this is a, a viewer mail, and I'm not going to do the viewer mail graphics, but Chase writes to me and says, Hello, Nick. Big time fan from North Carolina here. My name is Chase. I was wondering what your opinions on people in public blowing clouds into the air, like on the streets and such places. Also, when you go out into public or go to places other than vape shops, do you use a more discreet build that doesn't blow clouds everywhere, or do you just stealth vape it? Keep rocking, and as always, vape on, brother. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. When you go out, like if you're walking to 7-Eleven or you're walking somewhere or you're out on the street, how do you vape? Do you just blow big clouds everywhere? Personally, here's what I do. If I'm in somewhere, like a Walmart or a Starbucks or a, a restaurant or something, eh, I just don't vape. Just don't worry about it. Don't vape. It's no big deal. Unless you're at a vape meet where there's a restaurant where like they allow you to vape, then sure, you can vape. And even then, I don't blow obscenely big clouds. I don't blow obscenely big clouds anyway. Uh, I like clouds, but I'm not like, I'm not, you know, I'm not like vape capital status where I'm, I'm blowing huge clouds every single time I vape. That's just not my style. I just don't blow big clouds. But, a good example, if I'm on the street, like I go on, a, I go on, a, I try to go on a walk uh, every day. 
and I'll walk down to the waterfront park or I'll walk down, you know, through town. Sometimes I have to go to my bank, which is a couple blocks away. Sometimes I have to go this way, which is a couple blocks away, down and around like Ballast Point Brewery, which is a couple blocks away. And if I'm walking, I'll vape, but I generally don't blow giant clouds. Like, I guess if I had to show you, which I don't know how I can do that, but when I'm in public, I kind of have a different mentality of, yes, of course, I still want to vape. I'm going to make sure that there's not a crowd of people around me that are going to get a face full of vapor, and you vape a little bit more discreetly. And it's very situational. Sometimes I blow the vapor straight up as to not bother anybody, and sometimes I'll blow it straight down as to not annoy anybody. done that's it that was a satisfying vape and nobody got vapor in their face then your mentality sometimes changes like i remember we were at where were we where was that vpx i don't remember where we were but we had walked somewhere for food where was that vape meat Oh my gosh, I can't believe I don't remember where this vape meet was. I think it was VPX. We had gone to the official after party and there was a restaurant there. And on the bar side you could vape, but on the restaurant side you couldn't. And I kept having to like remind myself and Ruby was like, da, 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 don't you can't vape in here because I would just be talking and blah 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 and bullshitting and laughing and you you've been at a vape meet for the last 2 days. So it's second nature to you to just Oh yeah, oh, blah blah vaping. You can't do that. Like your mentality changes when you're at a vape meet. You you get this like I can vape all the time mentality and you can't. And there was a couple times even when I went and hung out with, with CJ at Vapor Venue for the day, we we went out to dinner uh, to Korean barbecue with some of the Vape Life guys and I had just been vaping and vaping all day and we're out in the parking lot and I'm just destroying clouds I'm just blowing clouds everywhere and then I realize wow this kind of probably makes me just look like a big douche like being out here blowing clouds in public it kind of made me feel like a douche and I don't like feeling like a douche so I don't tend to blow big clouds in in public places let me know what you do let me know what you think of that how do you feel as a vapor if you go somewhere and you see someone blowing big clouds I remember when I went to the Slayer show occasionally down in the front because I'm old and I stay in the back but occasionally down in the front you just see a big plume of vapor go up and I'm like yeah that guy's a vapor and you just blew a huge cloud in the middle of a crowded audience. Like, how does that make you feel? For me, I kind of cringed a little bit. I was like, oh, I kind of wish he wouldn't have done that. But how does it make you feel? How do you feel about uh, how do you feel about vaping in public? Do you stealth vape? Do you blow big clouds? Do you blow medium-sized clouds? Do you vape where you're not supposed to vape? Hopefully, hopefully not. But thank you, Chase. That's actually a pretty interesting little uh, little question there. But that's what I got for the vlog. There's a lot of stuff coming up. I got a lot of devices to do reviews for. Of course, there'll be more vlogs. Um, I'll have a vlog uh, hopefully next week. Shoot, next week is ECC. Oh no. I'll try to do a vlog next week. I might be skipping a vlog next week. I might be skipping a lot in August, kind of moving forward. Um, I'm going to be gone at ECC the 13th through the 17th. And then the weekend after that, I'm taking some personal time away. And then the weekend after that is Vape Mania. Shit. Well, I'm going to try to get up as many videos and vlogs as I can. Of course, at ECC, I'm going to shoot a whole bunch of video because there's just going to be a whole bunch of people there and bringing two GoPros and my iPhones and no selfie sticks and I'm just going to shoot as much video as I can put that together into a vlog for after ECC got a lot of stuff coming up but as always thank you so much for the continued support thank you so much everybody who tunes in and watches the vlog it really does it really does mean a lot to me my heart is in the vlog what am I, what am I going to grab what am I going to grab let's grab the cult mod let's drip some juice here on this Kennedy and let's take it out. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping. <laughs>